Hi, friends. This is your friend, Suna Senman, and I'm going to give you some cliff notes on the Law of Attraction. Uh, I think it's something that is easily misunderstood. Um, sometimes people feel like they can will it themselves by just saying uh, over and over, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to have, whatever it is. But um, this is some cliff notes for you to pay attention to. So I'm going to give you an analogy, a metaphor, because that's what seems to work really well. Um, if you think of all the electronic uh, stuff in your kitchen, uh, you have your toaster and your hot water cooker, uh, perhaps you have a coffee maker and your refrigerator and your stove, um, a, a lot of electrical items there, a blender, uh, maybe a mixer, uh, a Cuisinart, you know, uh, many, many different uh, things that you have in your kitchen. Now, they only function when you get electricity to them. So the electricity going to those things, all the potential um, kitchen gadgets that you have, uh, they are only in use and only taking action and only doing something when you connect them with the electricity. Well, life is full of potentials. Anything can happen. It's like having a kitchen full of electric gadgets that you can use anytime. But your thoughts are the electricity that turn them on. So if you don't want to mash and mix and grind your um, relationships to a pulp like you would use a blender, you don't connect the electricity to the blender and you don't connect the electricity to thoughts of disturbing, confusing, um, creating feelings of abandonment, whatever it is that you don't want now. Every time you say, I don't want something, you're feeding that something. Because, I'll give you an example right now. Do not think of a pink elephant. We just plug the electricity into the potential of a pink elephant and up pops that thought, right? So when you are in relationships and you are uh, cautious about um, making waves, you're, um, you really, you don't want to upset somebody, you don't want to hurt somebody, you don't want to um, uh, push someone away, Everything that you said ignores the don't and you're feeding those energies. So this is where I get into what I call conscious creativity and perhaps that's what we have to look at instead of law of attraction and stuff because we actually have very lazy minds. We just kind of look at what is and start deciding, oh, I don't want that or I do want that. But it's all, it's all just reflecting off of what's out there already. What we really need to do is go within and kind of create this bank, blank slate within. And that's what meditation is great about, just focusing on your breath, quieting your mind, and allowing your heart to speak. And your heart will speak in imagination, in colors sometimes, in feelings. And you want to connect into what your heart wants. And that is deeper than material things. Uh, but material things can guide you to that. Perhaps when you see beautiful flowers, you feel joy. Your heart wants the joy. You can get the joy from the beautiful flowers, from watching children laugh and play, from 
pleasantly surprising someone with a gift that they've always longed for. It's the joy that your heart wants. And then your heart can engage your mind to kind of figure out, you know, how to bring that joy about. You can think, oh, I'd love to buy myself flowers. That would bring me joy to have flowers in the house. That's what I did. Um, you can think, oh, it's sunny outside. Oh, just to sit and feel the sun on my face and the warmth on my body. That would feel wonderful. That would give me joy. So the heart speaks the desire and then engages the mind to the thoughts. But when we have the mind engaged first and we're looking at things and judging them, oh, that picture on the wall, you know, I really, I don't know if I like that or not, you know, uh, or the way the furniture is set up and, I, and I'm reflecting back onto that. But if you, and whether I like it or not, but, and even um, people who do design interior design or renovations of homes and stuff, if you just, instead of looking at where the walls are now or where the furniture is now and thinking, well, I don't know if I like it right there or not, just take everything out. I mean, you can do this just in your mind, but some people need to do it physically. Take everything out of the room. Make it a just a blank room. And then from that blankness, start imagining what, what you would like, you know, um, there's a window over there. I think I would like uh, to get the light from the window. So maybe I want a chair that's, that's close to there where I could sit and get the light from the window. Or, um, yeah, that corner looks like a little cozy corner where I could sit and read with a lamp, you know, and, the, and a little coziness. So you, it's, that's an example of also clearing out your mind, Clear, taking all the furniture out of your mind, taking all the pictures off the wall in your mind. Those are the stories, the stories. And now we're going to go one level deeper. We have stories in our subconscious that we may not actively be aware of. And this is where working with a coach or a therapist or Someone who can help you reflect helps you uh, bring these stories forward and where you can actually see them and work with them. I personally also do a, a, a healing massage where I hear the stories held in your body. Like if you have pain in a shoulder or a knee or hip or tightness in your back, these are all from your thoughts that have created stress and strain and therefore tightness. Now what these thoughts are may be hidden in your unconscious, something you're not aware of all the time. Um, an example can be just like, you know, uh, a, a stress about uh, d deciding, you know, uh, what um, to study in the university or uh, stress about um, not knowing how this event that you've planned is going to go. And they may not be um, conscious. They may be conscious, but they may be unconscious stuff. They may be something that came from your childhood interpretation of something. Say you are going to uh, meet someone new and you have within you stories and memories of meeting new people, right? Um, I'm pulling something out of my hat, no hat, but I'm pulling it out of the air. And uh, Maybe you um, were a three-year-old, four-year-old, around that age, and you saw uh, the, a, car a character on TV that you love. You love watching Barney, for example, the big purple dinosaur, whatever he is. And you think, that's so wonderful. And then, you know, you're going to meet Barney because he's coming to your friend's birthday party. And, you know, that sounds fun. Go meet Barney. Well, when you have been seeing Barney on your little TV, 
he's like, yeah, maybe that's small, right? I'm not very big in this, <laughs> in this video, right? I don't look very threatening. But then Barney comes as a six foot tall dinosaur when you're only about three feet or less yourself and you meet Barney and that's frightening, right? So then the idea, the story within you of meeting someone new may be subconsciously frightening, even as an adult. So these are the kind of things that, yeah, we do work with in, in therapy and coaching and stuff is, is helping you find the underlying stories um, that are causing your reactions, uh, not just, you know, your behavioral reactions, but your um, physiological reactions within causing that drug of whatever comes out, adrenaline or whatever, within your body and then affects your organs and affects your health. So um, then going back to simply looking at what has been called the law of attraction and now I want to kind of shift that over to conscious creativity you have to look at is your canvas that you're going to paint your new life on really a clear white canvas or are there already paintings and stories underneath that are going to impact what you are creating going forward or if they are really active stories that you're just reacting to you haven't moved the furniture out of the room and started from the beginning. I hope my metaphors are helping you. I really wanted to emphasize the thought of not wanting something is actually bringing that something to you. So that's where you have to step back and think, what do I really want? And it's deeper than I want that relationship or I want that car or I want that job. It's why do you want it? And get back into the heart's calling. And the heart is very, very simple. It wants joy. It wants peace. It wants bliss. It wants expanding love harmony. That's what the heart wants. So I hope this is helpful and I hope this will give you an opportunity to work with yourself. Of course I and there are many other um, like therapists and coaches are available to work together with you. I also do quantum healing hypnotherapy where I help you access your own inner wisdom, your higher self, your true self beneath the monkey mind chatter uh, that goes on. And, and there's something really wonderful about hearing yourself give you the answers that you need. And that can happen in the hypnotherapy or that can happen in a really nice uh, coaching, therapy, interaction. It can also happen journaling. So I do encourage you, write a dialogue, ask your questions, and answer your questions in a journal. All right. So lovely seeing you. I hope you'll have an amazing day and really take charge of your life with conscious creativity. Blessings.